Okay, so um, let's let's go ahead and get started, even if there aren't many people here, because I, I always do record these and then post them on YouTube. So the first thing is um, somebody from Miami Dade visited me, the director of community ed today, because uh, I, I still do the in class in-person classes at Miami Dade, even though most students don't show up in person. And I, I signed everybody's um, certificates. So you're going to get certificates saying that you're, you know, you took this Python course. And um, it's kind of funny, like almost everything is remote nowadays. You do signing remotely, but I, community Ed really likes to get the signatures in person. So I guess he's going to drive over and and give it to you guys. I'm not sure, but I just signed it and then he took it. So so let's let's talk about what I have on the screen right now. <clears throat> so what what I have here is I have something called auto py to exe. So yeah, last class somebody asked a really good question. The question was how do you how do you distribute these python files and i said well if if somebody is a developer and they they already have python installed you could just send them the py file and they'll be able to use it but really most people expect an exe file so i i installed this auto py to exe and i i just kind of want to show like how I installed auto py to exe. So we might have mentioned pip before and we might not have mentioned pip before, but let me let me go over it. So pip pip install auto py to exe. Okay. This this means that you will install this Python package on your computer. So if you're not in a virtual environment, if you're just like doing it from the command line, it'll install for, for the entire installation, not, not a virtual environment. Now, the, the issue with this auto py to exe, look, look what happens. So it looked really good. Like of all the executable creators, it, it looked the best, but the issue is when I run it, this is what I see. So I've been trying to fix this for the past hour, but I, I haven't been able to. So I go here and I can, I can enter in the location of the script, but no matter what I click, nothing happens down here. <laughs> so like, it looks really super straightforward but when I click on it, it doesn't work. So I don't even see any errors. I don't know what's happening with it. But um, you know, that's that's the type of thing you can get. All right, let's see. I think somebody's unmuted. But if they, uh, okay, no big deal. All right. So, anyways, um, I couldn't get this working. But I'm really curious if any of you could get this working. So what I'd like you to try to do is try to install it right now. And then see if when you click on it, you can build the exe. All right. So all you have to do is you have to type, type this into, type this into your command prompt. Okay, so this needs to go into your command prompt, in your command prompt. And if, if you're not on a computer that can do this, then, you know, we'll, we'll move on to something else in a little bit. But I just wanted to start with, with this to see if you can get it working. And then after you get it installed to run it, you have to use this command, auto py to exe auto py to exe then type to run it and it should it should look like this right 
this is what it should look like. The only problem is when I when I do this, I can't actually build the exe. Okay. So see if you can do this. See if you can get this to work. All right, let's see. Somebody wrote in here. The installation says it is a newer version available. Hmm. Um, oh, upgrade pip. <clears throat> yeah, upgrade pip is to... Let's see. Oh yeah, yeah, they have it in there. It's um, pip install upgrade pip. Yeah, I believe this will work. think that should work. Oh, it did create the exe. Well, that's exciting. That's that's something. <laughs> Mine wouldn't even click. So I'm I'm happy about that. Okay, but you get an error when you open the exe. Um, let me let me let you share your screen. Can you go ahead and share your screen so we can at least see the error? Okay. Okay, this is the, uh, let me see. This is the uh, the output folder. Oh, nice, complete, good. Oh, what is the? Uh, it seems that the uh, the Windows Defender delete the file. Let, let me start the process again. Ah, window. Oh, it might be. Yes, it might be one of my antivirus things. For example, if I if I go here, this is the. Uh, Yeah, but at least yours lets you click on it. So that's yeah, I can possible. see one director, one file. Right, right. Windows right, base, right. console base, and I when I go on. Oh, I think I will have to hold on. Let me launch the application again. Okay. Let's 
So this is the uh, the main file. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I, if I have to select one file or one director. I think what, one Here file is probably go. better because then it just um, okay. it just, it just works with your file, yeah. Okay. It's converting. Yeah, it looks a lot better than what I got, so that's good. Okay, okay and so it says output. output folder. Oh, nice. Let's try yeah, it. When I, when I tried to run it. Ah. So at that moment, it created the database. The, uh, but huh. remember that, that I'm doing this application with uh, uh, R2 files. I don't know if it's the, the other file is missing. Oh, yours has, yes, that's probably. Yeah, because I'm, I'm using this one and this one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you know what? Let's try to put those in a folder and then and then we'll just do everything in the folder. That might be easier. Okay. Let me delete this one. Okay. This option? One direct yeah, I think let's use that and then we'll just browse for but you see where it's um okay then let's click in there oh oh this is better and let's see if there's an exe file in there somewhere oh yeah there's one Oh, permissions. I wonder if you right click and say run as administrator, if that works. No, huh. Shoot. Well, well, uh, we, we, it, it's, it's a work in progress. <laughs> Yeah. So ETS permissions. That's what somebody says. Yeah, but, but at least we, we got a, a folder with all the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You, you got farther than I did. That's for sure. Um, I, I still don't know why um, mine isn't able to run, but maybe I just need to like restart. Maybe that's it. Uh, let's see. So maybe we can, maybe he can share his screen. So let's, let's go ahead and check that out. Let's see. So we have, um, auto P Y. Oh, okay. So did you run you have to run pip. Let's see. Pip install auto py to ext. Did uh, teacher. Yeah. Look at this. Uh, the the uh, ex exe file disappeared since that the window. Yeah. It remove disappeared. remove it from there. Yeah. So it's a permit. It's a it's a security issue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but at least it seems to be working. So if you're on a different system, you could probably build it pretty easily. Yeah, I will try later in another computer. I will let you know. All right, cool. Nice. Thanks okay. a lot. Okay, well, um, so this is this is this is positive. Um, I think it looks like an easy interface. It is now we're seeing auto py to exe is not recognized so let's see so you need to have you need to have python 
running on the command line. So let's see if let's see if we can get this fixed. Um, let's look up the exact command how to do it. So we got to go here to run Python from command line. And let's see. Okay, so I think it's a matter of we're going to have to probably go into going to probably have to go into some Windows settings, but um, it's not too hard. I think I think we'll be able to get it to get it pretty pretty quickly. So it is. Hmm, Let's see, run Python. Let's see. I've done this before. I just forget. Okay. Let's see. How to run a Python script in the terminal. We need to. We need to get Python. We need to get Python and Windows associated. So let's see. Run Python from command line Windows. Okay. Let's see. Actually, real Python is a pretty good site. Let's check this one out. What? What is this? Ah, oh, so annoying. Okay, train, 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 train. Okay, let's see here. So, do, 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 do. Uh, scripts versus modules, Python interpreter. Okay, so run it from the shell, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Python. Okay, Python, Python, Python. Okay, for Windows, yeah, the, the system registry, that's what we need to do. Um, yes, do that, do that. Let's see if I can run it. Just try to put it here on Discord. All right, let's see. So Windows System Registry. Windows System Registry. Windows System Registry for Python. Yeah, I think this is what we need to do. Okay, let's see. Hmm. I mean, this is one way to go to Python, but it's much nicer if you can just have your computer and you just say something like Python, right? That's that's so much easier. But yours yours doesn't So if you're if you are on the command prompt and you type Python, does the uh, idle start? Can you see this if you just type Python? Um, I 
Oh man, yeah, I keep, I see that. Gosh. Um, I mean, I have 3.9 installed too. Uh, it says Univision Communications owns this product and you can install it on this device. Um, yeah, it's, you know what makes this, this a little more complicated is like the way your systems are kind of locked down. I, yeah, I guess try to install that. Okay, so it's too heavy for, yeah, try that. It's too heavy for Discord. Um, can you use Google Drive? Oh, you know what else is a good site for that? You send it. You send it is pretty good for that. And we transfer. We transfer is also pretty good. Try try this. That's that's good for large files. All you have to do is just click on add your files and then just add my email I can just do my gmail account uh, let's see Full installer. Oh, this this is what I think I think was the missing step. Yes, this is the missing step. You see how I have on the screen add Python 3.8 to path? It's the path that's missing. Okay, so make sure that it, it when you select it, make sure to add. Python to path. And then if you add it to the path, then you can easily just type Python in your command line. To anyone installing it right now. This actually is a, a, a big change because most of our classes We've been using Replit, but the reality is Replit doesn't make it easy to do certain things, right? It can't replace all of these things. So this this is this is a beneficial thing that we're doing now. Actually, just out of curiosity, I want to see if you can install this with.
actually auto py to exe is installing here on replit we'll see if we can run it on replit What? I'm getting a failed network error. Ah, technical difficulties today. Technical difficulties. I'm getting failed network error. I'll try one more time. I'll try to refresh it. All right, uh, cars with DB. Click on download. Can anyone else download that? Uh, teacher yeah uh, I went to some places that run uh -huh. and then uh, health environment variables mm -hmm. you click there and then uh, hey, um, can you, you select the Python thing the path there? Yeah, the path, and, the path. Yeah, you select over in an environment and environment variables. You select the path there, and then you said okay. So you go run, run first of all. Then advance. See in system property, you go advance. And then you see environment variables. When you open that, you will see path, and then you go and find out the program data, Oracle, Java, whatever. Ah, okay. Hey, could you share the? Could you share your screen? 
It's all the computer. It's not the one that uh, I'm using for. Ah, not the one for Zoom. Okay, I see. Right, but I told you what it is. Yeah. You go run. Guess. You go run. Okay. Everyone run. can go to. Then run. you go. You you type uh, and run. You type s uh, y s d m dot c p l. S y s dm dot cpl ah okay and you should you said okay and then you go system properties ah advanced. okay system advanced. Properties. advanced then in advance in the bottom says environment variables ah okay okay and then you open that and the last thing is you see and environment variables, you see the path there. Okay, okay. And the path, and then you, you click the path and you put okay. You follow? So you have to edit, it's like you edit in the your system, actually. Yeah, now here, this this is the one for Python that I have. So but this is for this is only for Windows 10. I don't know. For right, Windows. right, right. For for people, but I think I don't remember. I didn't do this the way you know you just described it. It when I installed right. Python, it just automatically added this in. Yeah, but you had to go to the bottom one. It says system variables uh -huh. over there. You had to find out path also thing. I think path over there. Yeah. Now you said ah, okay. Ah, okay, okay. That's where. This is where the Python is going to be. So it's C. Program files. Users. Java, I think it's I the see, one from Java. I see okay. Java. I don't see Python in this one. Uh. But there is no. It is Python, and it says you you do see Python. Yeah, I think in the next one it says cooperation. That's not Python. I think this PS. One? That's yeah. Oh yeah, Fizz X. No, that that's not Python. That's not Python. No, but I do I do see Python up here in in this user. Okay. Page. So I, I must just have it for for G, right. not for the whole system. So you got to put new, I think it is, and then say okay. Oh, it, yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. I could I could do that. I think that's the one, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's for Python. Okay. Okay, very cool. Are you a systems administrator? Who me? Yeah. No, <laughs> oh, you know, you know your way around Windows pretty well. Oh, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. All right, cool. Okay, now I, I explain it, but now I have to do myself. <laughs> nice. Okay, I mute my phone. Cool. All right, so let's see. Another email using WinRAR for compressing the file. Let's see this. Let's see. Okay, so here we go here. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. I have WinRAR. What? I I just can't do anything with we transfer. For some reason, I'm just totally unable. I just keep getting failed network error. So I don't know. It's like 
It's like AT&T is blocking me from WeTransfer. Weird. And I've used this site before. Let me just try a different browser for some reason. I don't see why that would make a difference, but um, transfer expired. Okay. Uh, teacher, which one do you use? The one that uh, says only, it says a script also, or? Oh, for the, for the auto? Well, yeah, for the environment variable. So if you're, um, so you're installing Python right now? I have it, in, yeah, it's on it already, yeah. Okay. I installed it already, yeah. Um, I found I get another computer, so. I'm not using the one from ETS because it's a pain in the neck. Right, they, they limit stuff. Right. Um, let's see. So so when I installed it, the, the, the trick that made it really easy to use, so I didn't yeah, have how do you to get How do you get that one? Installed Python 3.0, 3.80. Just, just download from, from Python here. Okay, because I got three a three point eight five, not three nine. I got. I mean, the, they're they're not that different, but right. Um, if you're if you're just installing it for the first time, you might as well just install three point nine because. Okay. All right. Just because it's just the newest okay, one. Okay, I will try that one. I will try that one then. Yeah. So I got to come in here again and then and say the new one because I had three eight now. So I had to go it'll to edit, it to edit again again I guess. If you if you look at my um if you look at my installation, I just keep installing yes. new versions and then the old ones just stay in there. Like if you look okay. at my Python, you see I have right. Python yes. three six, three eight, three nine. So Okay. So nothing not happens. Big. Yeah, they're not that big. You just just install. Just, you them. just leave it there. Yeah, you just leave the old one. I mean, I guess they're kind of big. It's four hundred and twenty-eight megabytes, but you know, new computers they right they can deal. Okay. All right. Let's see. So, as expected, um, it doesn't look like it doesn't look like auto py to exe is working in replit i didn't think it would work in replit but um but yeah that's that's okay it's we're gonna get it all working on our local computers and um that's that's gonna be better so so we can just close this replit down i'm gonna close this we transfer because that's not working. And other than we transfer, why don't we just try, let's try Dropbox. Um, can you try Dropbox? Just because I'm, I'm just curious to see if we can get it to work with just sending those across.
Ah, okay. That'll work. That should work. Yeah, Google is probably going to have better results than we transfer. There we go. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, so now let's download it. And let's just download, download. Oh, come on. <laughs> this is hilarious. This is hilarious. There, Google is telling me that, that you're trying to send me a virus. <laughs> uh, okay, this is funny. It's, it's really hard to get this to work. Let's see. So what's the best way to get these files across? Um, hmm. We could do, I could set up some kind of FTP server. Like 15 years ago, that's what people would do. Um, and it's too big for Discord. Let's see, how else could we get this across? Yeah, I mean, I know it's not a virus, but it's just a Google, a Google fail, right? If somebody had a cloud on, on cloud, maybe you can use oh, the own cloud. cloud. Yeah, own cloud would work. Own cloud would work. Um, yeah, I think Dropbox, Let's see. I wonder if. Hmm. Oh, I know what I could do. I could set something. Oh, I know the perfect answer. I, I should have thought of this. <laughs> it's so it's so obvious. I have a website here. It, it'll take you a second to to make an account, but it's not super long. Um, but yeah, this this is what we can do. Actually, you might like this site because it's got a lot of good, a lot of good resources. So let me just make this here. All right, so maximum file size is unlimited. That looks good. All right, let's try this. Yeah, it's up to 100, 100 megabytes. So just just sign into sign into my Moodle site with um, your Google account, and you can or you can make a new account. It's really up to you. But I, I I'll invite everybody. I'll invite everyone here to join this site because this is the site where I have all the resources for my credit classes at MDC, right? The ones where they um, get, get the, they have to take tests and things like that. But um, I might have mentioned this in the video like two months ago. Remember, I made a video like on day one, but if you if you didn't make an account there, just just go ahead to this site and you should be able to upload anything you want here. So it kind of is like, I think, the easiest way to to do that.
Nice. So let's see. Let's upload this. Let's check this out. So yeah, when you go there, just say add submission. And then you just drag it and drop it in here. All right now, I'm in introduction to, to Python programming. What I should go? You should, see, you should see a link. Um, you should see a link that says under June 2nd through June 8th, it says, Jose Luis Diaz, please upload here. So if you just click on that, and then you can just drag and drop the, the file there. Just say add submission. Oh, do you see that at submission? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. Actually, yeah, every everybody should go check out the site. There are lots of great links on here. So if you if you just log in with your Google account, you can see that I've got um, good. It says that the maximum is uh, eight. Uh... Megabytes. Oh, it does. I thought I had it set for. It's not letting me uh, upload uh, the file. Oh, okay. Well, let me. Oh, okay. Let's fix this. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. No. Okay, so it says maximum okay. file size unlimited. Um, Okay, let me fix this. Okay, let me let me just fix this real quick. All right. Okay, so let's go here to um, Okay, search for post max size. Okay, I have it for fifty there. Upload max. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the problem. Okay, so let's change that to 50. Try to restart Apache. All right. I'm going to restart Apache. Okay, here it is. Okay, do me a favor, try to try to refresh the page and then see if you can upload it. Try to refresh the page and see if you can upload it. Okay. No, it says uh, the same. Does host a megabyte? Host how how big is your file again? It's uh, it's a twenty five. Oh, okay. So I have the max size here to be fifty, and then I've got I've got. A This one to be hundred uh, up 
upload max file size. Upload max. Yeah, I have them both set to be bigger than what you're saying. Upload max file size. Ah, that's weird. Let's see. Let's see. So we go here. Site administration. Server. PHP info. All right. Oh, this. Oh, because I'm in the wrong PHP version. Why would it be 7.1? Okay. All right. I think I know how to fix it now. Okay. So let's go back here. 7.1. Okay. Upload. Uh, that's 100. And then this one is post max size. Post max. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now it'll work. Now it'll work. Okay. So some reason I had the wrong version of PHP. Now it should work. So try one more time to refresh it and then see if you can upload it. Okay. Now it's time for Now it's working. Okay, good, good. Great. So let me go ahead and download that. And let's go here. Okay. So this is bizarre because I must have something wrong with my computer. That's just so weird. Am I out of space or something? Because it keeps saying failed network error. Um, I don't know. I mean, I have I have 185 gigabytes free. Um, well, probably I, something with, with the file tissue. Yeah, must be. Yeah, not, nothing to worry about. This, this type of stuff happens when you're trying to transfer things. Um, not not a huge deal. Um, we can we can keep working on it later after after class time. I think I wanted to show everybody. Let's get away from the auto to um, let, let's talk, stop talking about the executables and let's switch gears. Uh, I have pulled up here. I have pulled up here the QT designer and I just I just wanted to show people a little bit about the QT designer. So I think it's it's really great tool. It's better than the Pygubu. Just out of curiosity, um, did anybody else manage to get it installed? Did anyone else get QT Designer installed? I found it um, a little tricky to get installed. The, the way that I had to do it was I had to I had to install pip install pyqt5 tools. This is this is what I had to install. And then I had to search on my Windows computer for qt designer. qt designer. And then once I found qt designer, I was able to I was able to open it up, the exe file. Okay, and once once you get the exe file opened up, it's going to look like this. And the idea is you go new, and you can just make something like a main window and create. And then much nicer layout, in my opinion, than PyGoobu. So you can just start adding in your labels. And then you just double click on them and you say price. And then you can change the name over here. You see how they have object name. You can call it label price. And then you can go down here to a push button and you just drag the push button in. Then you can just double click on the push button and say add info. 
And then we can also have some, we can also have some text input widgets. So we have our text edit up here. And we can just resize it pretty nicely. And then we go over here and we can call it text price. And this, this is the way, once you get this QT designer working, the way that you can take it from the UI file to the Python code. So all you have to do is you have to go up here to file and save. And I'm just going to make a new folder here. So I'll call it new folder car info GUI. Just give it a name. And then inside there, I could call this one car user interface, car underscore UI. So then we go in here, car underscore UI. And then if we go to our folder, our folder is going to look something like this. get the right folder there it is car info GUI look at the look at the way that it's being saved it's being saved as a user interface scheme file so after you work with QT designer QT designer gives you a UI file so QT designer gives you a UI file. And 3DS Max is for graphical, is for graphics, right? So how do we go from this UI file into our Python code? Well, there's a pretty, pretty easy command for that. If we, if we look here, we can see it's pi uic pi uic let me just take a little screenshot of this okay pi uic 5 x then you put the name of your ui file then you put output and then you give it a name. That's, that's the command that you need to use. So let me just go into that new folder I made. So I'm gonna go into, I think it was called car GUI, car info GUI, car info GUI. And then I'm gonna say PYUIC5. So if you don't have that installed, which you probably don't, you have to say, pip install pyuic5 okay so this actually that's not right pip and uh, hold on a second maybe it's part of the the gui tools let me see This is it. This is it. You got to use this for the installation. Here. This is for the installation. Oh, it does? Okay, cool, cool. I, I had forgotten if I needed to if I needed to do that. But anyways, we go here to our we go here to our command and we just say P Y U I C five. And in my case, I've got it as car underscore UI dot UI. And I'll just have the output as car UI dot PY. And then I look here and I see I've got the PY file. And let's let's check it out in let's check it out here in Notepad plus plus. Okay, 
So you can see all the buttons and the labels are in there and the text editor. So I can copy this now into Replit or into PyCharm, whatever we want. Let's just use PyCharm because we're working locally today. And we'll make a new file called, well, I don't need to make a new file. I'll just drag and drop that file. That's the simplest thing. So I'll just go here, drag this over here into here. Okay, so now I can click on this and see it. And now I can run it inside of PyCharm. And we see we've got the price and we've got add info. And now it's, it's pretty easy to work with. So not that many steps to get it working. But let's see. Yeah, sublime text is really nice. People people really swear by sublime sublime text. People love it. I tried sublime text. Um, I didn't. I don't know why I stopped using it. I just I like PyCharm. Yeah, and let me tell you, YouTube videos are so great for learning how to do these things. I mean. YouTube videos are great. They're, they're, they're just excellent. Like there are some excellent tutorials out there. Excellent tutorials. All right. So basically, um, the, the steps that, that we just went through are, let's try to write them out. Install Pi. QT5 locally. You got to have pi QT5 locally. And then run the QT designer.exe locally. And then save your user interface locally to everything's locally. Save your user interface as a .ui file, and then run the run the command that we saw before. Command. So it's just going to look like that, where you take your UI file into your Python file. And then you can add whatever behaviors you want to your Python file. So what we started with today, um, turning our Python file into an executable, that's still a work in progress, right? That's, that's something we're, we're definitely not there yet. We, we haven't turned our py file into an executable. Um, so that's just going to have to be a mission for another day. But um, I'm going to figure out what's going on with that, with what I showed you before, and we'll, we'll get it to work. So we'll get the executables to work. And once we get the executable to work, a student had a really, really good suggestion. And the suggestion is next week, why don't we stop working with desktop and why don't we just do some Flask? And I think that's a really great suggestion. I really, I really do think that's a great suggestion because Python and the web is not that hard, right? And what's cool about it is there are front end libraries and back end libraries. 
So you can add, you can add buttons and input, text input. You can save it to a database. And the really exciting thing is there's a free service called Python Anywhere that's way easier. I mean, it, it just worked much nicer than this auto to exe. Like that wasn't working at all for me. But this is very, very straightforward, very graphical and, and free, right? Free if you're going to have it without a um, uh, custom domain name. If, if you want to have your own domain name, then you have to pay for it. But for the free version, we can, we can definitely start using this. And I think, I think I'm pretty well suited to, to teaching it because um, I've actually never made, I've, I've never before in my life made a Python script into an exe file. I've just never deployed anything like that before. Um, but I have worked with Flask before. So the, the project that I worked on was I made a website for students entering our campus to sign in to a to meet a counselor. And that was a couple years ago. Um, we, we stopped running it. I took it offline. We don't need it anymore. But it was it was fun to program. It was nice that it was somewhat real world. And I, I really enjoyed working with Flask. So I thought that was a really great suggestion. And let's let's just check out this video here about Python Anywhere. All you need is a web browser and you can start programming straight away. Creating a web application is as simple as clicking a button. We do all of the server setup and admin for you so you can focus on the problem you're solving. Because it's all in the cloud, you can access your stuff from anywhere and you can share and collaborate with other people and we're integrated with other cloud development tools. Python Anywhere is always on so you can schedule scripts to run periodically like web scrape. And when you need them, you can find advanced tools like HTTPS, virtual environments, SSH, even BI and Emacs. Our community has thousands of users, from hobbyists exploring ideas or building their own websites, to educators and their students, independent web developers building and hosting their client sites, and startups scaling up to tens of thousands of hits per hour. On Python Anywhere, it's easy to get started, easy to work together, and easy to scale. Thanks for listening. All right. So, what do you think? In interest in checking out Python anywhere next week and working with Flask? I think I think it'll be I think it'll be a good couple of classes. Hopefully, we can start with getting auto to exe working. If any of you get it working during the weekend, let me know. And if I get it working, I can let you know also. Right. Let's see. Let's see. So we have 15 minutes left. Why don't we, instead of jumping into Flask, why don't we do, why don't we do some Python programming today? We basically do Python programming every class. Today we've done no programming. Today we've just been doing setting up different environments, trying to get different things to run. So why don't we visit the first site that we went to and, and I'm, I'm, you know, careful of the time. I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get this working before 3.30. So let's go pick a level seven problem here on Code Wars and we'll go ahead and sort it by Python. So we'll, we'll end with some programming. 
And I'll pick one that I haven't trained on, so one that I haven't seen before. All right, and why don't we pick an interesting one here? We've got square even root odd. We've got length of month. Why don't we try that one? Length of month. So this says, return the length of a given month in a given year. Oh, but the code has to be shorter than 90 characters. Yeah, I'm not interested in that. Let's see. How about to replace all items? Let's try this one. Okay, so let's 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 try this one together. So this says, write function replace all that will replace all occurrences of an item with another. Python JavaScript, the function has to work for strings and lists. So here we see replace all one, two, two, one, two. In list one, two, two, we replace one with two to get two, two, two. Okay, so the object is the object right here and find and replace. Well, the first thing that we should do is we should look up in the Python documentation, right? So let's go here and say Python list replace. And we see that Python already has a pre-built way of doing it. We've got str.replace to replace a string in a list. So inside here, we can say replace the old with the new. So we've got the A, we're going to replace it with one. So this, this might be possible to use. We might, we might be able to use replace. So let, let's give that a try here. Let's go back here to, we've got our object. So we can say return obj dot replace, and we're going to replace find with replace. So let's see if this works. And it says list object has no attribute replace. So it works with strings, but it doesn't work with lists. So we're going to have to say if type equals string if type equals string so if type of object equals string then we return this and then we'll say python type string i think it's got to be type of let's see okay so it might be is instance let's see it is instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was thinking type, but it's not type. It is instance. So we say here, if is instance object string, then we're going to replace it. Else just return none. So we run it, see if we can do it with strings. Okay, we've got it for strings, but now we need to get it for lists. So how do we do this? Well, we can we can loop through and see if it is equal to what we're finding, we can set it to something else, right? So we can make a new list, call it new list equals an empty list and say for each object in object, for each O in object, if object equals find, then we're going to say new list dot append replace. Otherwise, we can just say new list dot append o. And then at the end, just return new list. So let's try this out. And we see it's not working. <laughs> um, why not? So it says one, two, two should equal two, two, two. 
if object, oh, <laughs> because I have to put O in there. If O equals find, now it should work. There we go. So now we can attempt it, but there's probably a more Pythonic way of doing this. Let's look at the existing list operations. So replace in list Python. Okay, replace item in list Python. So we see here, we see here that they have for loop. That's what we did. Uh, so we used a for loop. You could also use a comprehension. I mean, that might be the more Pythonic way of doing it. This, this might be better if we did a if we did this list comprehension. Hmm. You know what? Let's do. Let's let's just submit what we have. I'm going to copy the code that I did. Okay. So here's here's the code that I did, and then we can see what other sort of shorter solutions other developers have found. So let's find out. Because I'm looking at the time, it's already 3:23. Okay, so they say if is instance, yeah, they just sort of use the list comprehension. That's that's what I was seeing there. Yeah, they just all used list comprehensions. Not many people. This is kind of like the way we did it with the for loop. But this this is definitely the shortest way of doing it with the with the list comprehension. So this is this is a shorter approach. I think probably because Python wasn't my first language, I learned with C, then C++, and then Java. I'm, I'm just very focused on for loops, right? That's just sort of the way I've, I've been, my brain works. But I'm trying to think more in terms of generators, but um, it still is just not my first go-to way of doing it. But, you know, I, I definitely see how to do it, I can do it. It's just not my go-to way of doing it. And I was thinking there might be something built in for lists to replace easier, but it's not like with strings. So it's, it's not the same. Anyways, that's gonna be all the material for today. So for our goal, our goals for next week are going to be first, get the uh, car GUI program um into an exe file that's that's number one we gotta we gotta do that and then the second goal is start designing the car program in flask so i'm i'm gonna set things up ahead of time a little bit so you can see some working code so we can just jump into flask but i think you're really gonna like it and i think I think it, for some of you, if you've never done anything with the web before, you're going to see that that it's a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to that. But uh, any last comments or questions before we break? Okay, then. All right. Uh, oh, I see someone typing. Okay, then see you next week.